we'll start in just a minute. So um, I'm going to have the chat open just in case you need to um, come on to say anything. If something doesn't feel right for you, um, I can always help you find a different variation of the pose. Um, feel free to leave it in the chat if you don't want to pop on. I am recording, but I take everybody out. Even if you pop on in the middle, you're out of the, I take you out of the recording. All right, so listen to your body today. Only do what's comfortable for you. Come out of a pose when you need to, if you need to. Make any adjustments along the way. You're not stuck in any pose. Uh, and everything I tell you is just uh, an offer. You could always find a different variation that feels good for you and your body. Let's start lying down. So taking a moment here to find deep exhales. As you exhale, let go of all the air in your chest. Maybe you let it all out with a sigh. Exhale everything fully and completely. And check in with your breath. Notice the quality of your breath. Maybe it's shallow or deep. quick or slow. Notice if maybe it's catching somewhere. Notice where it's flowing. Taking deep inhales, long, slow exhales. So I invite you to find a breath that feels good for you today. We're all in kind of a different space, <laughs> different things going on with our bodies. So maybe a diaphragmatic breath feels better or maybe it feels better to breathe into the lungs. Wherever it feels good, take deep inhales, either into the belly or into the lungs or maybe a little bit of both. Long, slow exhales. As you exhale, release your day, your week, or anything that has come before now. Today you have permission to rest. Take this time for you. It is your time to replenish, to honor your body, your mind, and your heart. I will be sharing some poems today. If they don't resonate with you, feel free to allow my words to pass by and just return to the sensation of your breath. So let's find three more rounds of breath. 
with your at last exhale being the longest and slowest. And then once that's complete for you, making some small movements in your fingers and toes. Rolling around wrists and ankles. Stretching if that feels good for you. And then whenever you are ready, rolling over to one side, whichever side is calling for you. And then gently making your way up to seated. Okay. First pose, we're gonna create a ramp on the mat. So if you have blocks or pillows, you're going to create it so that the block or pillow at the back, if you can, is higher than the one at the front. And then placing some pillows or maybe um, some rolled up blankets if you don't have any pillows um, over top. So our first one is just going to be nice and gentle here. Um, kind of like a lazy boy recliner. <laughs> Whenever you get yourself all set up, you're going to come up nice and close to your ramp. Lying back here. Arms come out to the side, palms face up. And then whatever's comfortable for your legs. Maybe it's knees together, feet apart, wide on the mat. Or perhaps you extend your legs long. Nice and gentle. If you're having a hard time making a ramp with the props that you have, you have another option. You can always find a blanket, make it into a long roll so that it goes at least from your tailbone up past your head. Place that on the floor instead. <laughs> and then come on down onto the blanket roll. Arms come out, cactus shape arms. Okay, so two options here depending on what you have for props. If you need to change the shape of your legs at any point, feel free to do so. All right, connect with your breath. Notice where you feel your breath the most in this pose. Bring your awareness to your forehead, the place between your eyebrows and around your eyes. Relax any tension that you feel there. Softening your jaw. Allow your body to sink and settle into this shape on the earth as much as you possibly can. So I can give you the name of the author of this book later if you would like. I just can't pronounce her name properly, so I don't want to butcher it. <laughs> Our first poem is Let Go. 
They say that at some point you just learn to let go. I must disagree. If it just takes one moment to let go, then you never really held on tightly enough to a dream, to a goal, to a place, to a person, to anything. I believe that you let go little by little. You, you let go a little, then hold back on, but with a little less force until you fully release yourself. And the tighter you hold on, the more force you let go with. The deeper you dive, the higher you'll fly. The closer you get, the further you'll pull away. The weaker you feel, the stronger you'll become. So do not be ashamed of your weakness. We all have them. You must learn to be kind to yourself. You must learn to understand yourself. You must believe in yourself. Never think that you are a bad person. Differentiate between your self-worth and your actions. To say that you are bad is different than saying that you made a mistake. You can't fix yourself, but you can fix a mistake. And remember, not one person on this earth is perfect. We all make mistakes. We all fall. We all have flaws. We just need to look within ourselves and treat ourselves as humans who are worthy of respect and hope. Do not give up on yourself. Get back up. Be brave. Be happy. Finding three more rounds of breath. Allowing your last exhale to be your longest and fullest. Once that's complete for you, finding some small movements in your body. Whenever you're ready, slowly in your own time, rolling over to one side, whichever side is calling for you. And then gently making your way up to seated. Okay, so our next pose is a little different. I don't think I have taught any of you this pose. So it's kind of like a single leg forward fold. Um, you're gonna find as many props as you can <laughs> to place in front of you. I'll show you what it looks like and then if you need to, you can go find more props or gather what you have. So one thing you will need 
for certain is something small to place underneath your tailbone. And the reason why we want to do this is um, in order to help us kind of tip forward a little bit. So we want it to be um, just kind of underneath the hips. We're going to create kind of a stack here and it will depend on your body how close or how, how far away you would like the stack to be. We're going to start with the right leg out long, tuck the left foot in, activating the right foot so slightly curling back the toes. On your inhale you lengthen your spine and on your exhale fold forward. So you're only going to go as far as you feel comfortable and it will kind of depend. You may need to scoot yourself forward a little bit if you feel like your props are too far away. Maybe you're leaning forward too much. You want to come a little closer to your props and you're only going to come as far as you feel comfortable. Maybe it's forearms down. Maybe you're able to bring your forehead down. If it feels good in your body, you also have the option to bring the arms out quite long, allow the head to sink between the arms. Alright, so lots of options. Find what feels comfortable for you. Know that it's okay to round your spine here. We don't need to keep that flat back in this fold. And find your breath. Deep inhales. Long, slow exhales. Know that you can always come out and make adjustments if we need to. We're not going to be here for too long. So I invite you to maybe just be mindful of the thoughts that are going through your mind. Notice what's coming up. Acknowledge them. Don't push them away. And then just allow them to go. Trying not to engage with those thoughts. Not judging anything that comes into your mind as good or bad, right or wrong. They're just thoughts. Let's find three more rounds of breath. The last one being the longest and fullest. Once that's complete for you, activate the right foot once again, slowly make your way up to seated. So you take your time to switch over to the other side, activating the left foot before you come forward. See if you can first hinge from your hips with a straight spine and then once you find a comfortable place perhaps you round if that feels good in your back. Maybe you stay straight if that feels better. Notice if you're holding tension somewhere Release the tension in your left foot. Try not to hold yourself up using your arms. Find your breath.
Again, notice any thoughts that come into your mind, but perhaps notice them as if you are watching from the outside, as if you are an outside observer. So not attached to the thoughts. Those thoughts do not define you. Not judging what comes in, just notice. And then allow them to go. Finding three more rounds of breath. Activating your left foot before you come up. Once you come out, maybe shaking your legs out. Okay, our next pose um, is going to be uh, on our backs. So you can remove everything except for your blanket. And with your blanket, finding a long roll. So again, this is the roll where it's at least tailbone to above the top of the head. We don't want it too thick. If you come down, it's too thick. It's going to feel kind of weird. <laughs> you can always unroll it when you come down if you notice that it doesn't feel good in your body. Okay. So kind of depends on what feels good for you. Some people feel more comfortable with their hips off the blanket and some people feel more comfortable hips on the blanket. So whatever feels good, slowly lowering yourself down onto that blanket roll. We'll start with feet on the earth, feet about mat distance apart. So depending on your shoulders, maybe your arms are by your sides, palms face up. Maybe they're in a T shape, or maybe they're in cactus shape. Okay, so you have options here. If you wish, you can keep your knees together, feet apart, if that feels great for your low back. Or if you want to, you can come into um, a reclined goddess here. So you're going to turn your toes out towards the sides of the mat. Activate both feet and then allow your knees to drop out towards the side. Feet are going to come so you're on your pinky toe edge of your feet. And then relax your feet. So if this is really not comfortable in your thighs, feel free to grab either a pillow or a block or something to place underneath the thigh where the thigh meets the hip. Or if your knees are close to the ground, you can always place something underneath the knee. You also have the option, if this feels sucky in your body, Feet come together, knees apart, reclined butterfly. Again, you can use props underneath your knees. So lots of options here. Really the only thing we're all doing the same is placing that roll blanket beneath us. Remember you can adjust your pose if you need to at any point. Feel free to mention something in the chat if you are having a hard time finding a comfortable place and I can offer you something else. We 
Returning to the sensation of your breath. So this next poem is called A Taste of Your Own Medicine. And when I first read that title, I thought, oh, that's harsh, but it's not harsh. Don't give them a taste of their own medicine. They already know what it tastes like. Give them a taste of your own medicine. If they lied, let your medicine be honesty. If they played with your emotions, let your medicine be maturity. If they broke you, let your medicine heal. If they made you cry, let your medicine make them smile. These remedies of yours may take years to work, but they will work and they last. So be patient. Stay true to yourself and remember this. It is better for people to value you for who you are, not for who you pretend to be. Who you are lasts a lifetime. Who you pretend to be changes like the change of seasons. Don't be afraid to be yourself even if it means removing yourself from lives that you want to be in. You are, no doubt, worthy of being valued for who you are. So be who you are. Making some small movements in your fingers and toes. Perhaps rolling around wrists and ankles. If your knees are out in the reclined, um, sorry, in the goddess pose legs, activate both feet and bringing your knees back to center. 
If you're in another variation of legs, stretching your legs out long if that feels good for you. In your own time, slowly rolling over to one side, whichever side is calling for you. And then gently making your way up to seated. Our next pose is a side lying pose. I'm going to show you how I'm going to set it up with the props that I have. You may decide to use some different props like a thick rolled up blanket or a couple of pillows or even just one pillow um, instead of a bolster. So the way I'm going to set myself up here just to show you is um, we're going to place something down so that when we come onto our side, it's up kind of by the hip and into the lower part of the body here. Maybe something will be needed for under your head and maybe something will be needed for one of your arms. So we'll show you here. Um, you can always place a blanket between your knees or a towel or whatever you have uh, if you wish. So once you have something set up here, I'll show you first and then I can guide you through again if you would like. So once you have something set up here, you're going to bring, we'll start with the right hip, uh, just so we're, I know how to guide you in and out. Uh, right hip comes up against that prop. You're going to lay down on your side. Perhaps that right arm will come out here to the side. Some people like it up high. I think it's weird <laughs> in my arm. So your head's going to come down onto a block or the floor or a pillow. Maybe this left hand stays by your side or maybe the left arm reaches up and over and comes over the head towards a block or pillow. Okay. So again, bringing up something nice and close to your right hip. I think this also feels good with just a thick rolled blanket coming to the floor instead of all the props coming down. So the blanket will go kind of around the waist area. Right arm comes out in that T shape. Left arm reaches up and over. So you can use lots of props or just a couple props, whatever you feel good using. Experiment with what you have. Listen to your shoulder if that left shoulder does not feel good reaching up and over, leaving it by your side somewhere, maybe hand out in front. And then softening down towards the earth. You may feel a little bit of a stretch here along the bottom shoulder. You may not. Anywhere you are, we're finding a little bit of a bend along the side of our bodies. Taking deep inhales and long, slow exhales. Noticing the sensation of your breath. Where do you feel it the most in this pose? Does it feel like you are trying to hold yourself up in this shape somehow? See if you can relax and soften down towards the earth. If 
Feel the earth surrounding you, holding you, and keeping you safe. Notice if you're holding any tension in your shoulders, in your hips. With every exhale, perhaps you soften just a little bit more. Being that outside observer, noticing any thoughts that come into your mind, not engaging with them, not judging them. They are just thoughts. Okay, gently bringing your awareness back. If your left arm is up overhead, bringing your left arm, uh, left hand by your side, maybe use the left hand to slowly help you unravel and come back up to seated. Take your time. And then in your own time, flipping around so the left hip is up against your prop. And same thing, make your way down. Left arm on the earth. Right arm comes wherever is comfortable. Softening your body. Connecting to your breath.
This poem is called Make a Difference. Making a difference in the world begins with making a difference in yourself. Life may pass you by, and one day you will realize that you spent years on others and always wondered when you would have time for yourself. The truth is that it is so much easier to care for others than it is to care for yourself. Honesty hurts you, but being honest with others about themselves is a lot easier. So you invest in others. You forget that the best kind of investment is in making yourself a better person. Don't stop caring for others, but promise me this. Start caring for yourself today. Let go of whatever is holding you back. No excuses. Just start. Finding three more rounds of breath on this side. And once that's complete for you, allowing that top arm to come in front of you to help you come up to seated. So take your time. Our last pose is Shavasana or any final shape you'd like to take lying on the floor. It could be on your side body, on your front body, whatever is calling for you. If you wish, you can use a rolled blanket or some pillows or blocks underneath your knees if that helps protect or helps give you comfort in your low back. Use as many pillows and blankets as you would like to get comfortable. Once you find your way down into a comfortable place, connecting once again to your breath. Notice the quality of your breath. Notice if it's catching anywhere or Notice where it's flowing. Where do you feel the, your breath the most now in this part of our practice? Notice if you're holding any tension. Any 
anywhere in your body. And let's start by softening our heads, softening your head so that it sinks down into the earth a little bit more. Notice if you're holding any tension in your forehead between your eyes, or sorry, between your eyebrows and around your eyes. You know what I mean. <laughs> Relax and soften. Noticing your jaw. And imagine that you can soften both the inside and the outside of your ears. What would it feel like? Notice what happens in your upper jaw. Allowing your lower jaw to relax. Bringing your awareness to your shoulders On your exhales, relaxing and softening your shoulders. Bringing your awareness to your low back and your hips. Relax and soften. On your next exhale, maybe you are able to soften just a little bit more. Our last poem is called Moments to Live For. Think back to the moments when you felt like you'd made a difference in someone's life. Think back to the moments when you saw someone else's eyes light up because they saw the best in themselves through your eyes. Think back to the moments when your efforts to make someone realize what they are capable of doing finally started having an impact on them. Think back to the times when you felt that you were standing at the edge of a cliff, uncertain whether jumping would take you down to the lowest valley of disappointment or fly you up to the highest sky of happiness. Think back to the moments when happiness came so fast at you that you lost track of time, of space, of logic. Think back to the moments when you did something good for the sake of goodness without anyone knowing but yourself. Think back to the moments when you chose silence over words because words could not do justice to your thoughts, whether it was a happy or sad silence. Think back to the moments when your smile could not possibly contain your happiness, when your heart, your heart, when your heart ceased to beat so fast Think back to those moments and tell me, isn't your life truly worth living?
Weren't those moments truly critical for making you who you are? Be thankful for those moments so that you don't become immune to them when they happen again and again, because they most definitely will. Whether you notice them or not is based on how much you've cherished them before. If your mind has wandered, come back to the sensation of your breath.
And gently bringing your awareness back into the room. Maybe making some small movements in your body. Perhaps those small movements become bigger movements. So either staying on your back or if it's comfortable for you rolling over to one side, staying there for a few rounds of breath. And I invite you to take a moment to thank yourself for carving out this time to take care of your body, your mind, and your heart. Whenever you feel ready, gently making your way up to seated. And once you get there, lowering or closing your eyes. Taking deep inhales long, slow exhales. When your inhales, inhaling peace, love, kindness, and self-compassion. And perhaps on your exhales, sending that out to someone else in the world, maybe those in our virtual space, Maybe it's a pet or someone you care about deeply. May you go in peace, love, kindness, and gratitude. Thank you for joining me this evening. Have a beautiful evening.